Hey, pile driver, did you destroy the bearings on that vibratory hammer? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. I will teach you how to protect yourself because you could be blamed for something that wasn't even your fault. Okay, before we get started on this training video, keep in mind that bearings come in different clearance ratings. C1, C2, all the way up to C5 is the most common. Vibratory hammers use a C4 or C5 bearing. What does that mean? Well, C1 is tight, meaning the rollers are big and tight, and you would not use that type of bearing in a vibratory hammer. Why? Because there are heavy loads on a vibratory hammer and lots of heat is generated and you must have room for thermal expansion. So if you have a vibratory hammer that instantly failed on you and, and you look at the bearings and they're not C4 or C5, meaning more clearance internally, then you know it wasn't your fault. Somebody put in the wrong bearings and that happens often. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about using vibratory hammers on batter piles and what you need to watch for. In other words, what I'm trying to say is the following lesson is already assuming that the gearbox has the proper C4 bearing fit in it. And you've got to be cautious because vibratory hammer manufacturers do not broadcast that they're using C4 bearings. And for those that go out and try to rebuild their own gearboxes, the first thing they do is they look at the bearing number and then they buy the bearing without realizing that there's another number after the main number, which is the clearance number. And if it's not C4, then the gearbox is just going to burn up instantly. Anyway, let's go on with the lesson. This training video is about driving batter piles with vibratory pile driver extractors and what you need to know about bearings. Specifically, what causes bearing failure? especially the difference between straight roller bearings and double roller spherical bearings. All vibratory pile drivers have some type of bearing because you have eccentrics that are rotating to make it vibrate. Vibratory hammer bearing failure is often blamed on the pile crew and this video is to help you understand why these bearings fail. Not all vibratory hammer manufacturers use the same type of bearing. Some use a straight roller bearing and some use a double roller spherical bearing. The bearing shown on the left is a straight roller bearing and the bearing on the right is a double spherical roller bearing. Okay, I'm going to jump in here and just say this. If your vibratory hammer has a straight roller bearing and you're driving batter piles, then stand by for disaster if you don't know what you're doing. Okay, if you've got your vibratory hammer like this and you're leaning it over on a batter like this, that means that all of these bearings along here are getting side loaded. And keep in mind, manufacturers of vibratory hammers do not want you to lean the machine over that way, unless, of course, it's a machine with spherical bearings in it that can handle the thrust loads. Okay, so manufacturers with straight roller bearings, they want you to take your vibro and turn it this way. Not lean it over this way or that way, but turn it like this, which can bring on a whole host of other problems. Okay, it all starts with knowing what bearings are in the vibratory hammer. So pay attention to the rest of this video and trust me, you will be one fully informed pile driving person after watching the rest of this video. First, let's look at the parts that make up a straight roller bearing. Here is a cutaway view of a straight roller bearing with its outer race, straight roller, the cage, and the inner race. Now let's look at the parts of a spherical roller bearing. Here's the bearing with the outer race, the rollers, the roller cage, and the inner race. Each of these bearings handle load differently, so let's examine what we mean when we say bearing load. There are two types of loads on vibratory hammer bearings. One is radial and the other one is thrust. Before this expert explains, just keep in mind that when you're using a vibratory hammer and you're on a straight plumb pile, then you, the bearings are seeing mostly radial load. They don't see any side loading because you're straight up and down. But if you have side loads, which you will if you're driving batter pile, then the whole situation with the type of bearing 
changes. Here is a bearing expert explaining the difference. Please pay attention as he explains the difference between radial load and thrust load. The cylindrical roller bearing can support exceptionally high radial loads. However, it has almost no thrust load supporting capacity because rollers are not designed to contact the races on the end faces. Okay, what he just said is you can't really use a straight roller bearing when you're driving batter piles because when you lean the vibra over, it's going to jam the rollers up against the inner race and chip on them, which is the first signal that you should look for when a gearbox fails. Did it get side loaded? Did it have straight roller bearings? Well, if it had straight roller bearings and you ran it on a batter pile, then you probably destroyed the bearings. So what's the solution? Get a vibratory hammer with spherical bearings in it because spherical bearings can handle the side thrust as explained here. The spherical roller bearing is designed with barrel shaped rollers that ride in a curved outer race. Their heavy duty double row construction makes these bearings capable of supporting the greatest amount of both radial and axial load and they can handle a good deal of shock or impact load as well. Another thing to note is that roller bearings cannot handle misalignment very well. So that gearbox has got to be machined perfectly. And what happens when people blow their gearboxes, they don't take it back to the original manufacturer. So they take it to the local machine shop and they rebore it and they get the alignment all off whack. And if they're using a straight roller bearing, it just turns into a disaster. But as you can see pointed out here, if you've got spherical roller bearings, the shaft and alignment is, has some forgiveness. The inner race and rollers are free to pivot inside the outer race, so these bearings can handle considerable misalignment. Bottom line is, straight roller bearings cannot handle thrust, so therefore you've got to position the vibro so that it will not load up the bearing sideways. Informed pile drivers need to know that most vibros, such as the HPSI, the MKT, the PVE, and all of the vibros I just mentioned use straight roller bearings alongside the ICE machines. I'm sure many of you watching this video did not realize that you've got to get written permission from the factory before proceeding with driving batter piles or you will void the warranty. Sometimes you have to look in the fine print. And when you look in the fine print of the ICE warranty, you'll notice that it clearly states that you cannot drive batter piles without written permission from the factory. Otherwise, your warranty is void. Further reading into the manual, you'll see that it clearly states that without written permission, you can't drive batter piles with an ice machine. Now, this is not a dish on ice. Uh, in fact, ice should be commended for at least notifying and letting everyone that reads their manual know that they can't drive batter piles if they lean over onto the bearings. Other manufacturers that are using the same bearings do not even provide that warning. Okay, so it's in the fine print. Not everybody reads the fine print, but now you are an informed pile driver. Keep in mind that if you're going to drive batter piles or lean the vibro over even slightly, you better get written permission if that particular vibro has straight roller bearings. Okay, somebody's going to ask, what kind of oil do we use in the gearbox? We only use Schaefer 628. It's 140 weight, but the most important thing is that it, it uh, has a molly in it that sticks to the parts because you never know when you're going to pick the vibro up or how long it's going to lay in the sun. Keep in mind that if you're a good pile buck, you take your vibro and after you pick it up, uh, you lay it on this side and then you turn it and lay it on this side so that you get oil onto the bearings before you pick it up and vibrate with it. So if the vibro has been laying around for a while, make sure that you lay it down on one side and then lay it down on the other side so that the bearings get some oil on them. Hey, I just want to end this video by explaining that I am the corporate manager of pile driving operations for PACO. And I'm also the CEO of Antius Foundation, which manufactures vibratory hammers. I'm not taking a shot at straight roller bearings and competitors that are using them. 
I am just pointing out to the pile buck that, hey, if you don't pay attention and you lean that hammer over on a pile uh, that's on a batter with a vibratory hammer that has straight roller bearings, you're going to wipe them out. And here at PECO, we've had, we own lots of ice machines and other machines, and we have done a poor job of letting the pile driver know that he can't drive a batter pile in certain directions using these vibros that have straight roller bearings. It's your responsibility to read the manual. And in the manual, at least the ICE manual, it describes this situation, not in explicit detail. They don't say, oh, we're using straight roller bearings, so don't drive batter piles. They're just saying, don't drive batter piles without written permission. They don't explain why, right? And that's why this training video is necessary. Uh, another note is that in the USA, pile drivers in general do not read as much as, say, the European pile drivers. Or if you go to China, for God's sakes, try to go to a library in China. You can't get in. The libraries are multi-story. That's one thing about the Chinese. They will read a manual to death. And so we need these training videos here in this country, and that's one of the things that I would like to uh, continue to do. And now I'm trying to get the word out. Now, if you're using an Antius Vibro, of course, you could drive a pile sideways if you wanted to, because we are using spherical roller bearings. Why do we use them? Because as the manufacturer, I can't control what happens on the job site. I don't know when someone's going to pick up one of our hammers and lean it over sideways. And I've lived with that my entire 45-year career. And I've decided that if I'm going to make a vibratory hammer, I'm going to use spherical bearings. Yes, they do cost more. And uh, that's just the name of the game. But it doesn't cost more when you end up with a vibro that comes back off rent with all the rollers burnt up because they drove batter piles and leaned the hammer over and destroyed the bearings. Okay, so now you're informed. Thank you for watching and uh, appreciate it. If you have any questions about any of this, just call me, 206-495-7030, or you can email me at forestledge at gmail.com. Thank you. For more training videos, go to www.antiususa.com. Thank you.